America's nuclear arsenal rests on three pillars. Missiles buried in underground silos, stealth bombers ready on runways, and submarines armed with warheads that never surface. Together, they form the nuclear triad, the deadliest system of deterrence ever built. A force designed not to fight wars, but to make sure no war ever begins. For decades, it has kept rivals in check, but now, with China racing to expand its arsenal, one question looms. Can America's triad still hold the balance of power? In September 2025, Tiananmen Square became the stage for a moment that may reshape global security for decades. Before the world's cameras and under the stern gaze of Xi Jinping, China paraded its full nuclear triad for the first time. Rolling past the red banners were the hulking DF-5C intercontinental ballistic missiles, their multiple re-entry vehicles glinting under Beijing's sky. Close behind came the high-mobility road-mobile DF-61, signaling that survivability, not just raw destructive power, was now central to China's strategy. From the depths of the seas, China's JL series of submarine-launched ballistic missiles promised a second strike option. And in the skies, prototypes of air-launched nuclear systems hinted at a future where Beijing would wield the same layered deterrent long monopolized by Washington and Moscow. This wasn't mere pageantry. It was a declaration China's nuclear modernization is no longer aspirational, it is operational. And for the United States, it was a reminder that the architecture of deterrence crafted in the Cold War must evolve or risk obsolescence. To understand why the US is watching China so closely, we must revisit the Cold War crucible that forged America's triad. The term nuclear triad is a strategic shorthand for the three interdependent legs of America's nuclear arsenal, land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, and strategic bombers, capable of nuclear delivery. The nomenclature captures both the organizational structure and the operational philosophy behind the United States deterrent strategy. Three distinct but complementary methods to deliver nuclear weapons, providing resilience against any adversary's first strike. The idea of distributing nuclear forces across land, air and sea was born out of fear. Fear that a single Soviet strike might cripple America's ability to retaliate, and with it, the credibility of deterrence. By the late 1950s, President Eisenhower's administration had begun laying the groundwork for this triad of survivability. Under Kennedy, the doctrine of mutually assured destruction, or MAD, became gospel, ensuring both superpowers understood the suicidal consequences of a nuclear first strike. Each leg of the triad was developed in fierce inter-service rivalry. The Army pushed for hardened silos. The Navy championed submarines beneath the waves. The Air Force insisted on bombers that could project power across continents. The result was redundancy by design. No single vulnerability could collapse America's nuclear shield. Beyond military function, the triad carries profound symbolic and psychological weight. It is emblematic of American strategic resolve, the assurance to allies that the US stands firmly to protect collective security, and a message to adversaries that any nuclear aggression invites an unforgiving response. The most enduring and visible leg of the triad sits quietly across America's heartland. Since the 1970s, fields in Montana, 
North Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska, and Colorado have concealed hundreds of Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles, each housed in reinforced silos. The Minuteman III, introduced in 1970, remains a marvel of simplicity and lethality. Solid-fueled, capable of carrying multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, it can strike across 8,000 miles at speeds of 15,000 miles per hour. Its warheads, W-78s and W-87s, are calibrated for hardened targets like enemy silos, command centers, and air bases. But its strength is also its weakness. Fixed in silos, these missiles are visible and potentially targetable in a preemptive strike. Critics argue that this vulnerability makes land-based missiles a liability. Defenders counter that they serve as a nuclear sponge, forcing adversaries to commit vast arsenals to neutralize them, thereby preserving America's second strike capability elsewhere. Recognizing both the limitations and the aging nature of the system, the Pentagon launched the LGM-35A Sentinel program in 2019. Designed to replace the Minuteman III starting in 2029, the Sentinel promises hardened command and control, enhanced accuracy, cyber defenses, and perhaps mobility via rail or road systems. Yet the Sentinel faces political headwinds. With costs projected above $100 billion, it has become a flashpoint in debates about whether America truly needs silo-based ICBMs in the age of stealth bombers and submarine-launched missiles. For now, the land leg endures, embodying both the history and the controversy of nuclear deterrence. If the land leg is America's backbone, the air leg is its most flexible and politically versatile weapon. The B-52 Stratofortress, which first flew in 1952, still dominates America's nuclear arsenal seven decades later. Updated with modern avionics, communications, and precision targeting systems, the Buff can carry nuclear gravity bombs and cruise missiles like the AGM-86B. What makes bombers unique is their recallability. Unlike a missile, once launched, they can be called back, a powerful tool for signaling intent without locking into Armageddon. The 1990s brought the stealth revolution. The B-2 Spirit, with its flying wing design and radar-absorbing materials, gave the US the ability to penetrate dense Soviet air defenses. Carrying B-61 gravity bombs and standoff cruise missiles, the B-2 blurred the line between conventional and nuclear deterrence. Today, the future rests with the B-21 Raider. Sleeker, stealthier, and designed for adaptability, the B-21 is expected to carry hypersonic weapons, the long-range standoff cruise missile, and potentially directed energy systems in the future. Its range and stealth make it central to deterrence in both Europe and the Indo-Pacific, where China's dense missile defenses are a growing concern. Air power's advantage lies in its political signaling. During crises, nuclear-capable bombers can be deployed forward, circling ominously near adversaries' borders. Their very presence is a message. And unlike a missile buried in concrete, they can be seen and recalled at will. If bombers are visible symbols of deterrence, submarines are its invisible guarantors. The US Navy's Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines are among the most fearsome weapons ever built. At 560 feet long and displacing over 20,000 tons, each carries 20 Trident II D-5 submarine-launched ballistic missiles. The Trident II is itself a masterpiece.
with a range over 7,000 nautical miles, pinpoint guidance, and multiple warheads per missile, it ensures that no corner of the globe is beyond reach. Equally important is survivability. Hidden beneath the oceans, these submarines are nearly impossible to track, let alone destroy preemptively. But the Ohio fleet is aging. To sustain America's sea-based deterrent, the Navy launched the Columbia-class program, with the lead ship, the USS District of Columbia, expected to enter service in the early 2030s. Columbia-class subs will feature electric drive propulsion, pump jet propulsors for extreme quiet, and reactors designed to last 42 years without refueling. Though carrying fewer missile tubes, 16 compared to Ohio's 20, the Columbia class is designed for superior reliability and near-constant deployment. With adversaries investing heavily in anti-submarine warfare, the U.S. hopes that Columbia's technological edge will ensure that America's silent service remains unchallenged. Few remember today, but for much of the Cold War, U.S. Navy surface ships carried tactical nuclear weapons. From naval guns with nuclear shells to nuclear-tipped depth charges and cruise missiles, this fourth leg was once central to forward-deployed deterrence. That changed in 1991, when President George H.W. Bush ordered all tactical nuclear weapons off surface ships. The risks of proliferation, accidents and escalation outweighed their deterrent value. The move was hailed as a step toward arms control, even as the triad remained intact. The Congressional Budget Office estimates that modernizing the triad will cost over $1.5 trillion over the next 30 years. That includes new ICBMs, Columbia-class submarines, the B-21 Raider, warhead modernization, and command and control systems. Public opinion, meanwhile, is divided. For many Americans, nuclear weapons feel like relics of the Cold War. Yet, with Russia's war in Ukraine and China's aggressive posture, polls show renewed support for deterrence. The debate is not just about weapons, but about America's role as the global security guarantor. The triad was built to counter one adversary, the Soviet Union. Today, America faces two nuclear peers simultaneously, Russia and China. Russia is modernizing its Bore-class submarines armed with Bulava missiles. Its Yasin-class attack subs are among the quietest ever built. Moscow is also developing hypersonic glide vehicles like the Avangard, capable of evading U.S. missile defenses, and has invested heavily in nuclear-capable bombers like the Tu-160M. China, meanwhile, is expanding at breakneck speed. Its DF-41 ICBM rivals America's Minutemen, while hypersonic glide vehicles tested in 2021 shocked U.S. defense planners. Beijing is building more Jin-class SSBNs, refining GL-3 missiles with longer ranges, and working on stealth bombers that could rival the B-21. For the first time in history, the U.S. must deter two peer nuclear adversaries, while also accounting for rogue states like North Korea. The triad, once seen as overkill, now looks like the bare minimum required to maintain balance. From silos in the American Midwest to stealth bombers circling unseen skies and submarines patrolling the depths, the triad remains humanity's most fearsome invention. It is also, paradoxically, the most stabilizing. For over half a century, no nuclear weapon has been used in war. The triad's credibility is a major reason why. 
By ensuring that no adversary can escape retaliation, it has kept the nuclear peace, however uneasy. China's 2025 parade was not just a show of strength. It was a reminder that deterrence is a dynamic contest, not a settled fact. As Russia and China innovate, America must adapt, modernizing each leg while balancing costs, politics and diplomacy. The triad is more than hardware. It is a philosophy. Peace through strength. Survival through redundancy. In a world where the nuclear shadow has lengthened once again, it remains the silent sentinel of global equilibrium. That wraps up our deep dive into America's nuclear triad. The land-based ICBMs standing guard in silos, the stealth bombers patrolling the skies, and the submarines lurking silently beneath the oceans. Together, they form the most fearsome yet stabilizing force the world has ever known. But what do you think? Is the trillion-dollar modernization of the triad essential for deterrence in the 21st century, or is it time to rethink how we wield nuclear power? Should we explore other nuclear strategies like hypersonic glide vehicles, missile defenses, or even the return to tactical nukes at sea? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget, subscribe and ring the bell to catch our next episode, where we'll break down more of the world's most powerful and controversial weapons. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.